Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Hope everybody had a good weekend. So uh, let's talk about the tape. First first things first, I, I, I thought today mentally w was a very, very pleasant day. And I usually don't talk about the pleasant days mentally. It had nothing really to do with trading, although um, we'll talk about the pivots in a few minutes. Incredibly aggressive session. I, I think today was very, very pleasant, and I think a lot of people, when you, you look, when you look back at today's today's day, you guys will agree. This is the first time, probably in about two, two and a half months. Okay, my squawk box didn't every thirty seconds talk about people dying, more deaths, more body bags, more, you know, just everything. And, and for two months, that's all we kept on hearing every day. Uh, more people infected, more people. Uh, more people lining up to see doctors, more respirators and ventilators and, 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 and people dying. And after a while, two, three months, you, you mentally just start shutting down. And today was probably the first day that I could remember through all this, literally all this, I don't remember hearing a COVID-19 headline that made me raise my eyebrows, okay? And maybe I'm going completely numb to it. Or maybe there's a there's a subconscious part of my of my psyche just kind of pushing it away. But whatever it was, it was really mentally nice just to have a day that is not built up with a wall of worry. Just just and again, I think a lot of people when they when they listen to this watch this broadcast, you'll kind of think, look back and say, "I'm absolutely right." So hopefully, this is something that less headlines are better. Okay, I don't think we need to hear. And again, this speaks for every single news outlet out there. We really don't need to hear that Mama Joe from uh, Bismarck, North Dakota is positive with the COVID-19. We don't need to hear that. We, we get it. Okay, we get it. And today the market rallied. Okay, and the headline was the market rallies on lockdown easing for certain states that are are going to be reopened for business. That's the headline, okay? Well, what the hell was the headline for the last three and a half weeks when the market has been going absolutely rabid in the case of the most aggressive, right? If you guys remember, Trump came out two, three weeks ago, said the next two weeks are gonna be the most aggressive, death-filled weeks of our lives, okay? So if today was a rally on easing of lockdown, well, what the hell was the last two and a half weeks? Again. Headlines are headlines, reality is reality, and the most important part of what we're seeing right now is, again, the continuation belief that technical analysis is much better than the headline that tells us what the market did for the day, okay? I don't need to, to, to know what the mark, why the market rallied. If you go back to like last week's videos and this, this past weekend's videos, we talked about the importance, okay, of the queues closing above and reclaiming this 213 level, okay? We talked about, I wanted to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt today. Uh, we got some incredible moves, okay? But the most amazing part about today's session was they were split in half. There was actually some really aggressive moves to the upside. Can you guess which one it is? Da, 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 da. Um, but equally as important, we had some very, very aggressive moves to the downside. Again, we'll get to that uh, in a second as well. But what I, what, I do, what I do want to acknowledge, okay, and this is not something that um, I, I, I say lightly. Again, I'm not naive, okay? I get what's going on in the world. So the idea of technical analysis by itself is great, okay? And the first and foremost thing that I'm always going to look at is sentiment. But again, at the end of the day, I understand the market could come back at any point. And now we're starting to look for clues. Keep this in mind. Earnings season has started. So far, again, we talked about the last week or so. So far, major mulligans, right? Major mulligans for the banks. Again, Goldman Sachs saw today uh, July 200 calls, or June 200 calls pretty, pretty aggressively. We started seeing, again, big bets jumping on on Amazon ahead of earnings. But so far, what we've seen 
is a good engulfing system of stocks coming out with earnings, the market giving them a pass, and we're continuing to, to move higher and higher and higher. Now it's our job to kind of take off the rose-colored glasses. Again, some of you guys are still trading rose-colored glasses, believe that the general bottom is in, uh, generational bottom is in, and maybe it is, and maybe it's not. But again, you have to start looking for clues where the market could go next. Now tomorrow we have a second wave, actually the first really, really big wave of technology earnings. You got AMD tomorrow, you got Google tomorrow, Starbucks uh, tomorrow, non-beta obviously, Caterpillar, and Triple M. Okay, you have those big companies, and then Wednesday becomes crazy. You got Tesla that had a ridiculous move today. You got your Teslas of the world, your Facebooks of the world, your Microsofts, and Thursday, uh, Amazon, Apple, so forth and so on. So it's very, very important to see what happens after all these companies announce their earnings and the market starts to trade on materialistic news, but more important, what happens on further guidance, okay, which a lot of these companies have kind of taken off the table. However, again, we don't have crystal balls. We're not trying to predict what's going to happen on tomorrow's close. We're trying to use today's close as a guide to see what might happen tomorrow. Now, here's kind of where it gets a little tricky for tomorrow. Everybody see this, right? The top of this candle here from the 17th from 10 days ago was 216.51. Today's high was 216.63 and then faded, right? So you can make an argument, a very, very valid argument that, well, this is a double top from 10 days ago and the next move is lower. You could make that argument. And if you look, for example, what happened to Amazon today, the you know, pretty aggressive sell, you know, pretty aggressive sell-off uh, towards the end of the day. Uh, Shopify got hit a little bit, right? Shopify got hit. You had Facebook reversing down, okay? Uh, you, you had uh, Apple reversing pretty aggressively uh, from the highs. Netflix got rejected as well, right? Rejected at the top of the channel. So you can make that case if you wanted to. And again, I, I have a very, very open mind to it for tomorrow, but you have that case that the stocks that had the big, big runs are correlating to what we're seeing today, right? On the close on the QQQs. So for tomorrow's session, again, I, I, I do believe we will get opportunity on the upside, but I'm starting to see pretty good value. And I mean, when, you, when you're doing your research tonight and you start looking at charts uh, like BYND, we'll talk about that in a second. Facebook, you know, where we got rejected off the top of daily supply as well. Microsoft and Apple and NVIDIA. Again, you can see all these stocks are kind of playing out just like the Qs, right? NVIDIA got rejected, turn around. Uh, BYND, which was a huge pivot today, uh, got rejected off supply, turned around, so forth and so on. So you could go through the charts and kind of get a, a sense for yourself. So I, I think going into tomorrow's session, again, as much as I believe the market is incredibly strong today, okay, and I, and I do believe we'll have opportunities on both sides of the market based on today's close, based on data, based on what I'm seeing on the 60-minute channels, and just going through these beta charts one by one by one, there's only like 10 of them, so it doesn't take a very, very long time to kind of get an opinion. Again, we could have a very, very viable uh, back test into uh, for tomorrow's session. Again, especially if we gap up tomorrow, get stuffed uh, at opening ranges into 60 minutes supply and start putting in lower highs on the 60, then then again, it's, it should play out like I think. But at the end of the day, if we do, re, you know, if we do gap up tomorrow and start reclaiming uh, this 216.70, 216.80 level, we start rallying and stocks wake up ahead of earnings, then yeah, of course we can, we can start going higher. But again, you want to make sure you are trading versus uh, versus guessing. And again, we've been saying this for a very long time. You will never, you will never put yourself in a position of guessing. Okay. Uh, if you're putting yourself in a position of guessing, you're just doing it all wrong. Okay. We're, we're not that smart. None of us are. Okay. We were idiots by nature. All of us have an opinion. All of us have a bias. Some of us uh, put on those, uh, those extra hardcore rose colored glasses harder than others. So it's very, very important to trade on data, uh, trade on reality, not our own reality, and make sure that what we're seeing is what we are actually seeing, not what we want to see. So tomorrow, you know, we'll see, you know, we'll see. I, I, I want to give, um, I want to give, not the bears, I, I don't want to use the word bear, but I, I want to give the sell side the benefit of the doubt, at least at the open tomorrow, okay? And if we do start uh, reclaiming levels on the Qs, 216.5, 216.70s, maybe we'll switch. But, but again, based on what I'm just seeing, 
on these charts, for the exception of Tesla. We'll get to that in a second. Um, again, you could get a pretty good uh, back test. So crazy day today, right? Crazy, crazy day today. Um, r ridiculous move. I, I think that's the best way of saying it. When, when you when you really put in the work, and you know, I, because of this lockdown, and because I'm literally stuck on house arrest, just like everybody else, and I've been saying this on on the videos, I've been literally doing too much. Okay too much preparation on the weekends. Like I find myself like looking at charts now like three, four times for the weekend, almost to the point of beyond boredom, to the point that it's now entertainment. Don't know why, but that's what I'm doing right now. And going into today's session, I, you know, I had a pretty good list, man. I love that Tesla range. Uh, we talked about that all of last week. We talked about it on the video uh, yesterday. I loved Boeing. I felt Boeing was uh, was going to be more, more selling. I love the possibility of a blow off top on BYND. We saw that today. And, and it really is gratifying when you do put in uh, an incredible amount of work. And I work ridiculously hard behind the scenes. Uh, these things just don't jump on the page accidentally. There, there's a lot of thought uh, going behind these pivots. But once you see them play out, um, it's an incredible, uh, it's an incredible gratifying feeling that uh, all the work does pay off and all those hours looking at those charts um, really, you know, really put yourself in a tremendous uh, way of control. And the last thing you want to do uh, as a trader, professional or aspiring is not being in control. So, um, yeah, a lot of research over the weekend and it played out uh, incredibly well. Let's talk about it. Right. So uh, Boeing, you know, gapped up today along with a, a lot of other stocks. And I said, hey, watch the green to red for the experienced traders. And again, guys, I always note green to red is not a pivot. It's just momentum. There was a huge pivot on Friday on Boeing to the downside. Uh, it put in a low of 108.30s. That was Friday's lows. And I basically said, look, I go watch, you know, I, I go, look, this is not, you know, this is not a pivot, it's just momentum. It still needs to break. Uh, it still needs to build below uh, 128.20, 128 if it builds below, it can flush and Boeing destroyed it. Okay. This was an incredible candle, right? Just an absolute incredible candle. We talked about this in nausea. Uh, it started building below, went red. And once it started building below 128, this was, you know, this is a five and a half, six dollar candle, just like that. Just a huge, huge move, a uh, huge move on uh, Boeing. Uh, I caught Beyond Nice as well. Again, look, it got downgraded this morning by UBS. Uh, we already knew about the potential blow off top from uh, our, uh, from the video on uh, on Sunday, uh, talking about this pre market, talking about it last week. Uh, again, I still didn't understand the whole premise of why BYND ran on the whole shortage of meat. Okay. Uh, but okay, okay. So uh, BYND gapped up today, got downgraded uh, to a sell. I think it was like a seventy-three dollar price target. And I go again, watching green to red for experienced traders. No, again, this is not a pivot, just a blow off top, a potential reversal. Uh, one hundred eight thirty, one hundred eight. If it builds below, can flush. And I shorted off that one hundred eight and crushed. I mean, absolutely crushed. Uh, here was BYND, right? Here is the one hundred eight. It confirmed the 108, and I said it was going to get down to 97. It got down to 97 and change. Uh, here is why 97. It was right on the rising five-day moving average. So just ridiculous, ridiculous move there. Uh, Amazon never got to the 2450s. Shop never got to the 52-week high of 666, which I'm kind of happy. Seriously, 666? Okay. So here was definitely uh, the move of the day. If you thought Boeing and Beyond were great and they were fantastic pivots, again, what is there left to say about Tesla? So I, I love the Tesla pivot uh, going into this weekend, and it gapped up to 740. It, this was the pre-market high, 741, 75, 742. I said it needs to build for that initial push, the initial push to 646, 647. If it stretches, it could go to 753. Now, again, Raise your hand if you trade Tesla. Raise your hand who would not take 10 points off this trade. I'll wait. Right? So it gapped up and I go, oh, I really want the 735. But again, we can't get what we want. So here was the opening range pivot, 741.75, 742. Uh, that's where I got long. And this thing just, just, just did a Tesla, right? So here was the pivot, you know, here was the opening range right over here. This whole opening range. Uh, which was the 742 area. And I think this candle is still going. I mean, just forget about a $10, $12 candle. Th this thing put up, this thing put up a $60 candle. Nothing left to say. 
unbelievable, absolutely crazy move on uh, Tesla. Uh, 296 in the video, if it needs to build, here was 296 on the video. Bunch of 320 call buyers came in. This thing exploded, just went nuts. Uh, here was the 296 level right here, right? 296 level on the video, just exploded. Went to 303 and change. So this market is just absolutely nuts. Um, I didn't take Netflix, it was way too thin, but again, a, a pivot on Netflix is definitely setting up here, which I wanna watch for tomorrow. But again, if you took this trade, good job, it was just way too thin for me. Uh, 423.50, 423.50, if it builds below, uh, can flush. Again, not a big move yet, okay? And I think that's the most important part. Not a big move yet, but it, it took out it took out the, the 24, uh, you know, went down initially to like 421. I know it sound looks good on paper, 423 to 421, but it, it was so thin. It was trading almost like a dollar spread. So I, I kind of like it. I really do. If you look at the daily chart, I think if it starts taking out these two channels here, there's a shot this thing really gets hit. So I want to watch this thing for the next couple of days. So I didn't personally, I personally didn't trade any Netflix. So an amazing move, amazing move on Tesla, amazing move on Boeing. Uh, Boeing, just a huge, huge move on Boeing. Um, Monster and NVIDIA uh, take on the way up. Again, I think a lot of people today, you know, again, for all you guys watching this broadcast for the first time, this is our, our live uh, pivot feed. Again, if you can't make it to the live webinar, this is definitely the next bit, best thing. I, I think a lot of people would echo, uh, echo the statement about Tesla today. Just an absolute monster move. Uh, I was watching this thing to the upside afterwards. Never got there, uh, obviously, on Boeing. Uh, beyond amazing, just a monster session, monster, monster session to open up, uh, open up the week. And I said, look, uh, 97 is your last exit. If it gets there, uh, it went down to 97.50. So just an amazing move from the 108 uh, pivot there as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, a lot of people echoing. I mean, killer day as well. I mean, the, again, you don't need you don't need a lot of these trades. I mean, you don't, you don't need you could just catch one or two of these pivots, man. And these things do their job. And this was a sneaky pivot. Uh, this was an absolute sneaky pivot towards the end of the day. Uh, Tesla experience traders only 797 to 91 uh, needs to reclaim. Might see a run to 800. And if again, if you look at net at Tesla, I don't know. I have to look at the news why it's selling off after the close. But here is the 791. It's now like 15 after the close. Uh, I got to look at the news after I stop recording. So here is the you know here is the sneaky pivot right here, uh, the 791, and the damn thing went to went to 799. So big move there. So uh, crazy day, right? Crazy crazy day uh, again uh, tomorrow. Um, you know again I want to watch the sell side bias first. Uh, again double top here. For now, right? Double top here in the queues. You got a double top in a lot of names, either uh, getting rejected off uh, daily or 60 minutes supply. So as much as we sit here and talking about the, you know, the market looks great, the market's uh, completely negating bad news. Remember, the bull market doesn't go straight up. The bear market doesn't go straight down. It's all about day by day, trade by trade, hour by hour, minute by minute. Let's live to see another day. That's the most important part. Guys, I love you all. Have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.